All right, in this video, we're going to get a glimpse into classes and how classes work in Python. Again, this is a basic overview of Python, so if you're comfortable with classes in Python, feel free to skip or skim this video. In Python, everything is an object, and every object has a class. So here, I'll create an integer i, and I can print its double underscore class. We'll get into these double underscore attributes and methods a little bit later. And s is a string, and I can print s is class. When, anytime you have an object, you can always find out what class that object has. And then you can look into things about that object later. A bit about what a class is. So a class collects attributes and functions related to a given object together. So generally, you create classes when you want to describe a kind of thing that has state or properties, and then a collection of attributes or actions or information that you want to kind of keep associated with each other. So a class describes a kind of thing and all the things you can do with that thing. In this case, we're defining a class for a car. And we can create instances of car for individual cars. So a car is a kind of thing, and then we instantiate car to make individual cars. So executing this defines the class car. And we can see we've got three methods. Double underscore init is what's called uh, when you instantiate or create a car. So every time you create a car, this will be called. And then start and accelerate are user-defined uh, functions or methods that are called, that you can call on any given instance of a car. And note that any instance method defined like this will always have at least one argument called self, and that refers to the instance itself. We can use this self argument to refer to the object and access attributes such as the year, the fuel, the speed, properties, and other methods. So now we can create an instance of our class by calling our class name car, and then we pass the arguments specified in the dunder init constructor method. So we can specify the year and the fuel, and these will be stored as attributes on the car, and we can print uh, our instance. And what we have is an object that is an instance of our car class. This is saying the class name car in the module Dunder main, which is the interactive module. This could also be my module or my script. And then we have an instance of our class. And what it means to have an instance of a class is that the methods that we defined on that class are available to call on our instance. So we have my car, and now my car dot start will call that start method that we defined, and my car dot accelerate will call that accelerate method. So start started the car and accept and made our noise and accelerate updated the speed. So when calling these instance methods, you'll see when we define start, it had an argument self, but we don't pass that here. So self is passed automatically by calling it as a method on an instance. So you don't have to specify self to call a method. We can also access the attributes that were defined in our init method. So year is the model year, fuel is a string, and speed is a number. We updated the speed with our accelerate method. So calling methods are a way to update state. So magic methods are something used a lot in Python. Magic means a method that is defined by convention in the language. Often we are casting objects to strings, asking for their length, um, multiplying them together. So we saw this with lists and strings where they all have a different definition of what multiply and add might be when you take two, two strings or a string and an integer. These are implemented as specially named methods. So if you've done operator overrides in something like C++, operators are special. In the Python language, operators are just another method. When you write this a plus equals c or a equals a plus b, that looks like special syntax in the language, but it's actually calling the method a dot double underscore add b. And so when you define a class, you can define what happens when you add two things together. You can make it be something that makes sense, or you can make it be something that totally doesn't make sense. That's totally up to you. And this is how we saw in the previous lecture, things like lists and dictionaries have this bracket access for give me something out of your container. And this is why Python has this abstract notion of containers, things that contain things. So the bracket notation calls this method get item. And if you do an assignment, it calls this method set item. And so however you store things or look them up, you can, if you have something that contains things and you want to look things up and store them, you can pass totally arbitrary things here. It's not a syntactic requirement that these are integers for lists or strings for dictionaries. They can be 
any kind of object, and then you write a method that interprets any kind of object and performs the appropriate lookup or assignment or error. And even calling something as a function. So functions are just objects that have a, a call method. So you can make anything callable by defining one of these double underscore call methods. And you can make any you can define what a truthy version of your object is. Like maybe a truthy car is a car whose speed is not zero. And you can also define equality, say right? when to consider two things equal. Are they equal if their model year is equal and their speed is equal and etc. So it's up to you to define what equality means for your object. You can have looser matches, stricter matches, that's up to you. And there are quite a few of these methods that are uh, useful. We can look up in the, the data model in the Python reference documentation. So currently, when we try to print our car by calling stir or print, it's not very informative. We just see that we have a car and then this is the memory address, which is not at all useful. But these magic methods, for instance, when we're printing, it's calling the dunder stir method. So we can specify what happens once people print our instances of our car class by defining this magic dunder stir method, because this is what's called when calling stir or print on instances of our car class. So here we can define this method with a special name and say, this is a car from our year driving on our fuel at moving at speed, our speed. So this special method is now called when we convert the car to a string. So here we're creating a car from 2007 that runs on benzene. Now when we print that car and say, this is a 2007 benzene powered car driving at, at speed zero. Classes bundle state, which we call attributes, and actions, which are functions or methods kind of are associated together that you want to pass around together. In Python, classes can have multiple parents. There's no such thing as private attributes, um, truly private attributes in Python. You can approximate private attributes with special names or certain logic that raises errors on certain actions. But in general, there's no such thing as a, as a truly uh, protected uh, variable in Python. The result of that is that defining classes can often be uh, simpler and quicker in Python. So here's our, an even simpler car it starts it, makes a sound. So now subclasses are ways to take a class and define a new class that inherits all of the logic and attributes of the parent class, but then adds or modifies the behavior. So here we're defining an electric car that inherits car. So it inherits the start method and inherits the color and, and properties, but it overrides the sound. So we're defining electric car that extends car so you say class electric car, and then in parentheses, you specify the class or multiple classes that it inherits from. And then existing methods. So in this case, we're defining a new constructor and this special super syntax, so you call super with no arguments, dot double underscore init. And so this is saying, do what you would have done before in our parent class. The parents init defines the color and default sound, and then we're modifying the sound to be a different sound for electric cars instead of the, uh, the default uh, car sound. And we're also defining a new method called stop. So in this case, cars can start, but only electric cars can stop. So if a subclass doesn't override a method, then when you try to access that method, it will find it on the parent class. So here we are creating an electric car. We're calling start and start is not defined on electric car, but it is defined on car. So when we call start, it's calling the start method that was defined on car. But then we, when we call stop, it's calling this stop method here. So subclasses are what to say, take something that behaves mostly like you want, and then either add things, you can remove things, or you can restrict things, or any kind of modification you can do with a subclass. All right, now we can talk about extending the default types. So if you'll recall, everything is an object, everything has a class in Python. And that means that even these default objects that have default classes can be candidates for subclassing. So let's find a use case for in this case, we are counting the occurrences of certain strings in a sequence. So we've just got a bunch of strings, A, B, C, A, B, and we wanna store the counts in a dictionary. So we see is for each word in the sequence, we check if we've seen it before. Um, if we haven't, we start the count at zero, and then we increment the count to one. So we have this condition, and then we add one. The result is a dictionary where the keys are the unique strings in the sequence, and the values are the number of occurrences. So each time we iterate, we have to do this check to say, has this shown up and do something different depending on whether it's been seen before or not. So this is a case for subclasses. So we're going to define a class that extends dictionaries and it takes a constructor, takes a single attribute as our default item. And then we're going to override the magic get item method that says, instead of raising a key error, if you try to get something that we don't have, we're going 
to store our default item and then return it's actually there. So here we say counts um, is a default dict with a default item of zero. And now we don't have to have a branch here because that branch is actually implemented in our dictionary class. So for each word, we take what's currently stored for that word in our counts and then we add one. And the result is the same. So the logic is actually the same. It's just we've moved that to our class instead of from our logic. So if, we, if this is a pattern we use a lot, we can implement the common logic in the class instead of every time we use it. And so this is a common pattern with implementing classes is you implement the common logic in the class so that every time you're using one of those things, you're calling the shared implementation rather than re-implementing things everywhere you do it. Another thing that subclasses are used for is things like is instance checks. So we actually saw in the previous video checks for do something if it's a dictionary, do something else if it's something else. And is instance is one of the ways that we check for that. And we can see with our class that the class is our default dict class. If we check is counts a dictionary, the answer is yes, it is. And that's because is instance returns true, not just for things that are a class, but things that are any subclass of that. So since default dict is a subclass of dict, any default dict is considered, yes, this is a dictionary. And this is the right thing to do in general because it has all the same methods, you know, keys, get item, set item, all the iterators, all the methods that work on dictionaries also work on default dict. The only thing we changed is this get item method. Everything else about it behaves exactly the same as a default dictionary. So that means that we can extend default dict and we can also use this anywhere that accepts dictionaries should also accept our default dict class. And so that was our quick overview of classes and types in Python.